Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki, also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats. So welcome, big welcome to all new viewers. I've had quite a few new subscribers, so I just want to welcome you all to, to the podcast. Um, and of course, welcome back to all um, returning viewers. And um, yeah, thanks for coming back. So this, just so everybody knows, this is primarily a knitting podcast, although I do get into some of the other crafts I'm delving into at the time, such as cross stitch and crochet. Yeah, so um, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, yeah, things are, I don't know, I feel like things may be moving a bit backwards um, in our province. There's been a lot more um, restrictions put back in place um, on crowd sizes and things like that um, to try and curb the increase in cases of COVID that we're seeing, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't know. Fingers crossed this kind of ends soon, but again, I don't want to dwell on all of that. So let's just jump right into the knitting. <laughs> um, yeah, so today I have one finished object and I think pretty sure I showed it on the last podcast, at least the start of it. This was my conference call knitting. Um, so this is just another <laughs> grandma's favorite dishcloth. Um, and I did it up in Bernat Handicrafter Cotton in the teal and off-white color, I think. Um, oh yeah, I should say everything that I talk about will be found down below in the description um, and links to all of the patterns and um, shops and things like that that I talk about. So as I mentioned last time, I think that dishcloth was to accompany um, this dish towel that I made out of the same colors. So yeah, I still have to weave in the ends. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they look kind of cute together. So I can't wait to weave in those ends, get them washed and uh, start putting them to use. Um, and that is housed in my cat hair covered <laughs> Pac-Man bag by Longview Creations, which is a, um, a Canadian Etsy seller, bag maker. Okay, so that's my one and only finished object for today. Um, so I'll move into works in progress. So housed in my, my needle crafts, um, two at a time sock knitting bee bag is my two and a half, two, <laughs> two at a time socks, vanilla socks that I'm trying for the first time. Okay, this is gonna be a disaster, I'm sorry guys. Um, I'm doing the heels right now. So there are a lot of strings attached. <laughs> um, yeah, so where's my progress keeper? Here we go. So I'll just move these strings out of the way. Here we go. Um, so the progress keeper shows where I was last time. I didn't make a huge amount of progress, but I have started the heel. So I'm just doing a, a simple slip stitch heel. Um, and this, again, just a vanilla sock pattern. Uh, 64 stitches I did seven rounds of twisted rib and and then just literally knit till I felt like it <laughs> and then started the heel um, and the yarn that I'm using is from polka dot creek yarns and the colorways are uh, it's their sock yarn and the colorways are I believe this is spring showers is the speckle and then I'm using um, their colorway pool for the um, cuffs, heels, and if I have enough, I'll do the toe as well. So yeah, kind of slow going, but that, I think mostly that's because um, I've been kind of really loving my other two uh, works in progress. <laughs> so I haven't put as much time into my socks as, as, um, as I probably should. But you know what? Knitting's all about enjoyment, right? That's the way I look at it. So do what you love. So speaking of that, moving into my next work in progress. And this is just housed in a little bag that I got from Michael's. Um, it was a really affordable little bag. Um, and I think I showed it last time. So it's got these little holes on it. I guess you could put your yarn through and, and do um, stranded 
knitting or two at a time socks maybe i don't know there's no separation inside it's just this like canvas um, material no pockets nothing <laughs> it's not fancy but it does the trick so housed in here is my woodlark shawl which is a pattern by fiber tails and oh sorry so i did oh, i didn't put a progress keeper on here but i did make quite a bit of progress so i'll show it this way because you'll be able to see it a little better um so i think last time i had just finished this section here so i've done a few more sections i'm down to some more bobbles at the bottom here um and this is a steaked shawl so as you can see it's being knit in the round and there's my steak stitches right down here. So afterwards, I'm going to try my first steak. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I did, um, in terms of modifications, the only thing I did was put a few extra steak stitches on here. Um, just because it's my first time and I wasn't 100% confident in my steaking abilities. Um, so I think the pattern asks you to cast on four steak stitches. Two on each side. Which two just didn't seem right so I did eight so I kind of doubled it but yeah I'm really enjoying this knit um I find it hard to put down so I actually had to tell myself tell myself that I need to put it down so I could work on my swallowtail and then once I picked my swallowtail sweater up again I was just like I couldn't put that one down so it's really fun to have projects that you're that you're really enjoying and can't put down I love that so the yarns that I'm using for this um are I don't think I have tags for them. Uh, they're from Small Bird Workshop, which is a Canadian um, dyer. They're non-superwash. It's a 75-25 um, BFL Gotland mix. This is my first time using BFL and Gotland, actually. Um, it's, it's, more, it's kind of a rustic yarn, but it's soft. Like, it's a soft rustic yarn. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's really, really lovely. And the colorways I'm using are the natural. So this is the undyed color. And then this like kind of deep, it, it's showing up a little bit darker than, but it's, it's more of a, like a teal, like a deep teal. Um, and it's called ink. Yeah, really loving this. And, um, oh, I should mention that I am knitting this up as part of a knit along that um zoe and um, naomi are holding so from the felicity yarn studio podcast and yarn creator podcast um they're holding a steak along 2020 and um so i'm joining in on that and i need to have this project done by the end of the year which i think is totally doable um given how fun it is to knit <laughs> Okay, so moving on to my next work in progress and my final work in progress. I've been somewhat monogamous, I guess. I haven't cast on anything new, but there will be new casts on as soon as, they, as soon as the yarn arrives. So housed in this bag, which is just um, actually the, the really cute bag that um, you get when you purchase yarn from Georgian Bay Fiber Co., which is a local hand dyer. Uh, here in Sudbury. So she gives you these little drawstring bags instead of plastic bags to take your yarn home with, which is really cute. So I'm just housing my project in there. And this is the Swallowtail sweater. Let's see, I think I put a progress keeper on here. Yep. Um, so this pattern is by Natosophy. So this is the front with the butterfly. I don't know if I can show you here, right here is where my progress keeper starts. So I made a bit of progress. I was really hoping to get the butterfly done for this podcast, but unfortunately it just didn't happen. Um, I'm loving this. I've tried on, tried it on and it fits um, nicely. I think it's going to be, so it's going to have a little bit more positive ease than the pattern, um, the original kind of calls for because the original is quite fitted and I'm that's just not my style so I would like something a little bit looser so I've I went up an extra size and I'm trying to think I think I use the same needles 
But yeah, so this yarn is from Georgian Bay Fiber Co. I'm using four colors. Um, this color here is called Noble Rust. Nope, it is not Noble Rust. It is Franklin Lichen. My apologies. This is Franklin Lichen. The, um, the dark brown here is called mm, Wrought Iron. And the beigey color is called uh, Vintage Lace. And then there's a fourth color that I haven't started yet. That's going to be kind of like the main body. That's the Noble Rust. And this is the color here. And these are all 100% um, BFL. Which again, this, this is my first time using BFL. Um, I cast both projects on the same week. So yeah, BFL might be my new favorite. I am loving it. It's just so, I don't know, there's something, it's like bouncy or something. I don't know, it's so different than Merino. Merino is very soft and smooth, but this, this, I don't know, there's something about it I really, really am enjoying. Uh, yeah, so that is my final work in progress. Wow, this is gonna be a short episode, which is good because I only have room for 30 minutes left on my camera, so. I have to keep it lower than that. Um, what can I say? Yeah, the squishiness of the sweater is so nice. I can't wait to wear it. And this is my, I think I mentioned this, this is like my first time doing legit color work where I feel like I actually know what I'm doing. I am not, probably not knitting <laughs> the right way if there is a right way. Um, I'm an English thrower and that's how I'm doing my, um, my color work which is basically involving me like throwing my yarn, dropping whatever color I'm using, picking up the next one, throwing. So I know there's faster ways. I mentioned this on the last episode. I've tried different methods. I just can't grasp them. They're very uncomfortable for me and my stitches were super loose. And I'm sure if I had more patience and I took more time to practice, um, I'd probably get better at it. But I just, uh, I'm just excited to get the sweater done. So maybe the next time. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for knitting whips. Um, I do have one cross stitch work in progress that I don't think about. No, I've never showed it on the podcast. So this is housed in um, a new bag that I purchased off of Etsy um, from, I think the handmaker's name is Little Boat 88 or something like that. Again, links will be down below. Um, so this is just one of her vinyl quilted bags. So this is all uh, quilted fabric. And then on the front, there's just a plastic vinyl bag. So you can see um, your projects inside, which I think is super helpful. So this was a cross stitch I started. My goodness. Huh. It's got to be. It's It's got to be over 12 years ago, at least. Um, I should really look and see. Uh, yeah. So it is called Blackstone Fantasy Garden. Oh, there's quite a glare on there. Maybe what I'll do is I'll pop in a picture of the finished project, what it's supposed to look like. And it is by uh, a company called Ink, Ink Circles. So it's it's a mixture of cross stitch and um, I think it's called back stitching. Gosh, it's been a while since I've been into the cross stitch world. Um, but I really, it's almost done. I just, I just really want to finish it. So this is what it is. Um, it's kind of like a Celtic design, I would say. And um, it's got, so the, the lines, the borders are kind of filled with cross stitches. And then all of the little flowers are done in different hand dyed colors of um, back stitching. So yeah, I just have the, the one side to finish and then I can get it framed and, um, and hung up. So yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that. And I should mention the, oh, sorry, the, <laughs> so used to talking about knitting, the threads, these are the threads here, total mass. Um, they are by Carrie's Creation. Now, again, I purchased these like 12 years ago, so I don't, this was a kit. I don't even know. I didn't even look to see if she's still up and running, but I will. If she's still around, obviously I'll link to her 
um, to her website. And yeah, they're just these really pretty kind of jewel tone threads. They're really pretty. So yeah, looking forward to finishing that off. And yeah, I think that's it for all my creative works in progress. So move on to acquisitions. There's not a ton, um, but I did want to share um, a few because I'm excited. <laughs> so I finally got my hands on um, Emily Foden's Knits About Winter, which is a beautiful book. Beautiful book. So um, for those who don't know, Emily Foden is a Canadian yarn dyer. Um, she has her own uh, yarn called Viola Moon, I believe, or Viola and the Moon. Links will be down below. So um, the, the whole, the main reason I purchased this book um, was because I had seen, sorry, I'll find the picture of it, um, on The Gentle Knitter. Nicole was knitting uh, the soiree sweater, which I had seen on, on Ravelry, but I, like, honestly, the pictures just did not do it justice. So, my goodness, I cannot find it. I think it's near the end. There it is. Okay, so this is it. Again, like, if you looked at the pictures, it looks, it looks cute and all. Um, so it's kind of an oversized boxy um, long sleeve sweater with, with these beautiful, it's almost like a honeycomb. I don't know if that's a brioche there and some cables. It just, it's, it's very elegant and yet comfortable looking. And yet from the front, so that's it from the front, it just looks pretty simple. But I remember uh, Nicole showing it and underneath yeah, you can kind of see it on this one picture here. Underneath the arms, there's like a cable that runs up and down. And then on the sleeves, you can see it's a little puffier here. And there's like a, I believe like a cable right here is the cable. Yeah, it's just, it's so pretty. And I wouldn't, like if I had just seen this, I'd think, oh, another boxy sweater. And I would have kind of overlooked it. But um, because of, you know, seeing the details that Nicole was showing during her knitting, um, yeah, really sold me on it. So that's the main reason I purchased this book. But there's like so many lovely patterns in it. There's this really pretty winterberry vest that has little um, baubles on it. And what's this one here? The East Wind. Oh, yes, I think. This is the one that um, Kat from Heather and Hops is making, which I think is also really beautiful. It's kind of like a, I guess like a cardigan, but it's almost like a jacket. And again, it has these lovely, oh, stand up, lovely details here, cables and stuff. Yeah, it's really pretty. Anyways, the designs are really lovely. Um, I've heard her yarn is fabulous and I have, even before I had ordered the book, I was trying to get my hands on her Polworth alpaca, which is the original yarn that she used for the soiree. I have not been able to get my hands on any. Um, I did message her and Emily let me know that it's difficult to get because um, it's milled in really small batches. So when she does her shop updates, um, you basically have to set an alarm and try and get in there as quick as possible to get it um and I don't even think she's had it in the shop for a little bit or if she has I've missed it but yeah so I might have to look at an alternative um and I think yeah, I was talking to Kat from Heather and Hobbs and she had she had recommended um some Jacob yarn I think that's what she's using for her uh east wind so I might look at that because I've never I've never used Jacob I'm really enjoying like trying these new new types of yarns and new new fibers I would say um yeah so that's knits about winter and then i had pre-ordered um you know this is old news for everybody i'm sure everyone in their dog has this book but i didn't have it <laughs> 52 uh, weeks of socks by lane so um yeah it's literally 52 patterns of socks 
I don't think I ever need to buy another pattern, sock pattern. <laughs> um, there's different, uh, for those of you who don't know, there's, there's different styles. Um, you know, some are definitely simpler than others. There's cables, there's lace, there's uh, like house socks and color work, just, and the photography is just beautiful. <laughs> As with their magazines, they just, they have such a beautiful aesthetic, it's so calming and I don't know, just pairing that up with the dew drops on the, on the vegetation there. It's just so pretty. Anyways, so yeah, finally got that. So that was my second acquisition. And my last with regards to knitting. And then finally, so um, I think I mentioned, yes, I mentioned last podcast that um, my daughter, my 10-year-old, was experiencing some anxiety about returning to school. Um, I'm assuming that's what it was. She didn't really have, she couldn't really put her finger on why she was feeling anxious. But for the first time in her life, she was experiencing almost like a panic attack, I guess. So this was all new to us. And um, yeah, obviously it's very concerning. And I'd, I'd never had that type of reaction before. So I didn't really know what to do to help her other than, you know, hug her and comfort her and stuff and tell her everything was going to be okay. And it was happening at school during the first week of school and her teacher's really great. So she was messaging me and we were talking about things we could do um, on both of our ends to help um, kind of alleviate that, that anxiety. Um, and one of the things that the teacher had her doing was when she would start to feel overwhelmed, um, she'd get like a few minutes five, 10 minutes or whatever to go sit in a quiet space and just color or draw. So my daughter loves to draw. Um, she really loves anime. So she's been designing her own characters and all this thing types of stuff. So yeah, um, that's kind of one of her favorite things to do. Um, and then coloring. So I thought, well, why don't we try that at home? Why don't we try, you know, coloring before bed or whenever she started to feel ang anxious um we'd pull out the coloring books and we'd color so that like seemed to do absolute wonders for her anxiety like i i cannot believe it um so it started off we'd we'd just color when she was feeling anxious and then we got into a routine of coloring every night um for about a half an hour to 45 minutes before bedtime so kind of like as an unwinding activity um and she hasn't had knock on wood, she hasn't had any um, anxiety issues um, in the past week. So yeah, we're gonna keep up the routine. And so on that note, um, I purchased um, a slew of coloring books because we only had, you know, I looked through, she hadn't been coloring for the longest time, you know, she was drawing all the time. So I went through and I'm like, oh my goodness, all these coloring books are for like little kids. Like, I mean, little, little kids, things she's not into anymore, you know, like, um, Bar a Barbie or like a Disney princess and stuff like that. Not, not her taste anymore. So I was like, well, let's look at the adult coloring books and see what they have. So she chose, um, a Harry Potter one and was the other one. Oh, I surprised her with an Alice in Wonderland coloring book because she really loves Alice in Wonderland. And then for myself, um, I got this, oh, there's such a glare on it. It's Cicely Mary Barker's, um, flower fairies coloring book. So I have always loved fairies. It was kind of, I was kind of obsessed with them um, <laughs> for quite a while. I think it's, it's kind of dwindled a little bit. Um, I used to cross stitch like all these fairies and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. When I saw this book available on Indigo, I was like, oh, it just rekindled that like love of fairies again I don't know so I haven't I haven't officially colored in this because it literally just came on Friday but like they're so cute so yeah I'm looking forward to to coloring them in and the other book I got was I think it's pretty famous it's like this enchanted forest coloring book where you go through and there's actually like picture search and stuff like that um so yeah that's my final acquisition and with that, I'll turn to, to life stuff, but there's really not that much to report other than, like I said, um, things are a little bit 
moving a little bit backwards in our province and um, I know that we had received a memo at my at my work so for those of you who don't know I work for our provincial government um, as a species at risk specialist and I've been working from home since March um, out of my dungeon this this room actually this is my craft slash office slash guest room <laughs> um, in the basement so yeah we were uh, given a notice that we should be preparing to go back to the office um, and then there was really no other talk of it <laughs> it was just kind of like be prepared um, and then you know our managers reached out to us and and kind of I guess gauged tried to get a sense of of how we felt about that about returning to our offices and um you know whether or not we had any um i guess barriers to continuing to work at home what our preferences were things like that so i did make it known that um, my preference would be to continue to work from home especially given that i'm not sure what's going to happen with schools um i'm crossing my fingers they're not going to close but if they do then obviously i'd need to um be home with with my daughter so yeah so my preference would be to stay stay working from home it, I have no barriers to my job unfortunately um, my job has changed significantly since I started with the ministry back in oh 2008 so 2009 I started as a species at risk biologist and it used to be going out in the field looking for critters um helping with bird banding um you know seeing clients out in the field and advising them on how to avoid impacts to species at risk that kind of thing and unfortunately over the years it's just gotten it's gotten to the point where it's really desk job like i can do everything i need to do from my home my office <laughs> on a computer as long as i have internet access which in some ways is kind of sad, really. Um, but I guess it does allow me to work from home. So there's a bonus. Um, yeah, other than that, really nothing. We haven't been doing much. Um, my partner's parents came for a visit last weekend. Um, yeah, it was nice seeing them again. And my pergola. <laughs> so those of you who follow me on Instagram may know that um, my partner had ordered me a pergola for my birthday slash Mother's Day slash Christmas present. I don't know. It's pretty pricey, so <laughs> I think it's my present for the next few years. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's more of like a, I guess it's an arbor um, that has a, a wooden swing on it. Um, yeah, so we've received most of the pieces. He's managed to put the pergola part together, but we're still missing um, half of the swing which is so strange. So we got the bottom part. Um, we don't have the back part or the chains to hook it up. So I don't know what's happening there. He may have to call them again. This is like the, this will be like the fourth time he's been in contact with them. The other thing is, um, I have to be honest, the, the, the pieces were not, not very well made. Um, they were not, they don't fit together um, flat. So like things that should be flat, pieces that should be flat and fit together like this, and you need to, you know, nail them together, screw them together, don't. Like some will be curved. <laughs> some are just totally different lengths. Um, it, the craftsmanship, not good, not good. Um, so we did end up complaining about that because it was very difficult to put together, as you can imagine. And it is put together, but we have some concerns that it might not be structurally sound. So we'll see how it goes when we get the rest of the swing, if we can join it up um, and see how that goes. If it's, if it's too wobbly or too, feels like it's not gonna be stable enough, um, we may just take the swing off. So we, we, oh yeah, so we complained and we got a discount. I guess it was better than, I don't know. It would have been a pain to take it apart and send it back to so i guess that was a better option as long as we can use it so yeah it's got this lovely um trellis up the sides so i've been researching um plants that i can um, plant to kind of climb up and uh, grow along it and i'm leaning towards i think maybe clematis um 
I don't know if Clematis comes in red. I really would like something red to attract hummingbirds because we do have hummingbirds in the area. They come to my bee balm every summer. Um, so something red or, or dark pink or something like that that would attract um, hummingbirds would be really sweet. So yeah, all is not lost. <laughs> um yeah and that's i think i think that's about it for my updates and which is perfect because i only have a few minutes left on my camera time um so i will say goodbye here i hope you all have um a fabulous next two weeks and um yeah i'll see you then bye mm -hmm.